Gentlemen, today we're going over a weapon obscured through history, kind of forgotten. And that weapon is the Smith & Wesson M76. Known by true firearms aficionados, it's been overshadowed during the Cold War. And today, we're going over that gun. But the controversy of this video, this isn't actually a Smith & Wesson M76. But hold your horses, buddy. We'll get there. Gentlemen, I'm your CIA spook advisor to Arizona by Jean. It's a country often forgot, looks just like Arizona, and it borders North Vietnam. We have it on good intel that there are Soviet forces advising local NVA troops here. Now this mission is going to be top secret. You're going to need an infill and you're going to be hunting for a particular Soviet. It's a rogue balaclava variant. He goes by the name Takarich Baklava Nana. And your objective is to capture and or kill him. Godspeed, son. Adios, comrade. We intend to convince the communists that we cannot be defeated by force of arms or by superior power. They are not easily convinced. General, General Westmoreland, what more he needs to meet this mounting aggression. He has told us, and we will meet his needs. better understand the Smith & Wesson 76, we have to first better understand the Swedish K. To better understand the Swedish K, we have to understand what was going on in the world at the time, Vietnam. You see, during this time, there was particular high-speed operators known as Navy SEALs operating in Vietnam using a particular Swedish submachine gun known as the Swedish K, a 9mm submachine gun that came about during the end of World War II. Now, the Swedish K is a gun I've had on the channel before, at least the Balaclava variant has. And today we're going over, if you haven't already realized, the Swedish K. And that gun is freaking awesome. It's a fantastic tube submachine gun and it rocks at its job. Now what happened is that the Swedish were very against the American involvement in Vietnam. And when the Navy asked the Swedes to sell them more Swedish Ks, they not only said no, but hell no. And so of course America during the Cold War is not very keen on this. The military industrial complex is in full swing and they want their Swedish Ks. And damn it, man, they're gonna get their Swedish Ks one way or another. Relations between the US and Sweden further deteriorated when Swedish cabinet minister Olaf Palme displayed support for the North Vietnamese during an anti-war demonstration in 1968. The United States responded by having one of its Swedish US ambassadors leave the country and return to the United States. So as defiant as the American spirit is, they still want their damn tube guns. So they turned to a known firearms developer in America Smith & Wesson. So the Navy contacts Smith & Wesson and the corporation sends a few guys out to meet with SEAL Team 1 in Coronado. At this time, they propose that they want a very rugged, reliable submachine gun, probably drain quickly for water operations, and damn it, do they want it soon. This all takes place in 1966. Fast forward, now you start getting production of the Smith & Wesson M76 in 1968. The model designation number of 76 is just uh, that of a project number. It holds no year significance. Once these guns finally hitting the production line and started being sold, they were retailing for $76.50, a far cry of what I, a future YouTuber, would spend on this particular gun. Pain. Thank you, NFA. Thank you, ATF. God! 
The Smith & Wesson Model 76 would go on to serve in the Vietnam War with high-speed operators such as SEAL teams and MACV SOG, and would eventually probably be phased out in the more favorable compact CAR-15. There are different variations of this gun. One most popular would be the thread-on suppressor, which I would think would be my most favorable version of this. The gun itself is pretty good, but well, I mean, if it's a submachine gun, might as well suppress it, especially if you're doing secret squirrel things in a non-permissive secret squirrel country, maybe Cambodia as such. Makes sense. Smith & Wesson would eventually discontinue producing the Model 76 due to there being no need for them, with the war pretty much winding down, not making enough money off them, but the firearm would live on with licensed copies. Licensed copies, such as this one right here, the Mark 760. Now, this gun is gonna be pretty much a one-to-one -to, -one to a Smith & Wesson Model 76, minus the pistol grip furniture. It was made up of different styles of plastic and maybe some aluminum and stuff like that. Pretty much everything else, though, is interchangeable with the Model 76s. A big reason for this is that the Navy at the time still had a large inventory of Model 76s in their arsenal and they would need replacement parts for those weapons. Now this gun isn't a terrible submachine gun, but I think it does fall short of the prowess of the Swedish K. Having shot both this and the Swedish K, I can tell you, I would take the Swedish K. The Swedish K not only is just really cool, sexy, and elegant, but it just has a very good aesthetic to it. I know those are probably the same things, cool, sexy, and elegant, good aesthetic. It functions very well and in overall, I think the look is more desirable. Now, if you can't get any Swedish Ks and you want to have a submachine gun of this variety, then well, I guess the 76 is your option. Now, whenever I go over firearms on this channel, I do like to reference the pop culture that they pop up in. Movies, video games, i.e. etc. Now, the Smith & Wesson Model 76 didn't really have a good long movie or video game career. In fact, I don't know of any video games in particular that this makes an appearance in. I believe in the 70s, 80s, 90s, there were a number of shows that this would pop up in and or movies of that era. Now, there is one very popular movie that the gun would pop up in, and that would be The Dark Knight. In that movie, we see the Joker, after going through a scene throughout the city in the semi-truck, shooting RPGs and having a good time, he gets out of the truck after Batman derails it, and he has what many would think would be a Swedish K, but it's actually a Smith & Wesson Model 76. But his Model 76 has a very high cyclic rate, much higher than what they usually have, sitting around 600 to 700 rounds per minute. So it's a really cool little Easter egg if you're a firing arms aficionado, and chances are if you watch this channel, to some capacity you are. We're gonna have Colton interject some other pop culture that this thing popped up in, thanks to IMFDB. The Vietnam drip is undeniable. You know who else has undeniable drip? Americana Pipe Dream Apparel, fantastic young Zoomers, getting after in the Millsurf space and arena. Night vision, knives, manuals, and of course, really, really cool Millsurf clothing. They've been a great sponsor of this channel, and they'll be a great sponsor of your wardrobe. Link for them will be in the description down below. Now, of course, we'll quickly go over the gun itself, the manual of arms, in case you ever do find yourself acquiring a Smith & Wesson Model 76 and or its licensed copies. So you have your trigger, pistol grip, you have your folding stock. All you need to do to fold her up, lift up, and she folds to the side. Once folded to the side with this model, all you have to do is just pull her out. Hmm. And then we have our safety, which right now it's on safe. Flip over to semi, and then we have full freaking semi-automatic. We have our mag release back here with the mag. Now, these mags in particular are very compatible with Swedish K mags if modified a little bit correctly. Now, was that intentional? Maybe was it on purpose? Hard to say. Maybe the SEAL teams in MACV SOG had a bunch of Swedish K mags lying about, and it just happened to work out. Cool thing about these mags is they have a little lip on the bottom. Now, from what I was reading, it's so that you can't accidentally load them in upside down in case you're fighting in the dark, which is a good little tidbit. Load those mags in. Cool. Oh, wait. Load those mags in. A little bit tricky with the closed bolt right now, but this is, of course, a open bolt SMG. We have our mag release that tends to tab out once that mag is in there. You can see how it folds away when it's not. Now she's back in there. We have our barrel up here with a knurled protector of the threads, pretty much. You move that guy out of the way, you can start rationing the barrel off. and then you can take the barrel out. Now there's no indexing point on this barrel to really lock it into place, so in theory it could be rotating around, and some have said it could affect accuracy, but I mean, you gotta think, it's a submachine gun, what are you worried about from that far away? Now, of course, this could also be really great when you have different options for barrel types, such as suppressors that you can just screw on. Tube guns like this, I do enjoy very much because they are just so freaking simple, because I'm a simpleton. And you have a tube, you have another tube, and then you have your barrel, which is just another tube. So it's like three big tubes. Tubing hard, baby. Tubing real hard. 
tube. Of course, then we have our charging handle over here. Now, one interesting tidbit is that when the gun is on safe, you cannot charge the gun. When you switch over to say semi, now you can charge the gun. But one thing I wanna try is what we tried in the MP40 video is, could we do uh, say negligent discharge if you say caught the bolt on something and it didn't catch the sear and then it just got let go. So we'll try that right now. And absolutely, yes, you can do that. You just witnessed that, and that is a possibility. That's why a safety is important. Now, this doesn't have any sort of locking mechanism that can kind of keep the bolt closed in the rear position, unlike, say, the MP40 or the PPSH-41, which I actually do really like those features for an open bolt weapon system. So essentially, your manual of arms and safety is gonna be a little bit different. Chances are you're not gonna be riding around in the helicopter with this gun locked back to the rear just because it's not worth the risk you know, I would say. But then again, it's Vietnam and baby, there are no rules in war. Now the iron sights are gonna be fixed irons, not adjustable, just looks like some pretty simple welds. Overall, the gun is extremely simple and that's the whole point. It's supposed to be simple, rugged and reliable. That's exactly what the high speed cool guys wanted out of this firearm and they honestly got it. The gun would have its service of course in Vietnam, but of course it was short lived due to the new car 15s, i.e. the XM177, E1 and E2 coming out and essentially being the new found better option for jungle warfare because you now have a very compact rifle that holds 5.56. But of course, there's still gonna be applications for a weapon such as this in the Cold War era. So of course, I'm gonna show you how easy to take apart. It's just a tube. So there's just a spring, a bolt, and a few other tubes. So hold that pin, hold on to the tube. Spring is gonna push the buffer rear and the spring out. Then we got that bad boy, bad boy counter. Oh, we gotta turn the safety off, my bad. Take out the charging handle. There we go, and the thing just falls on out. And there is your bolt, open bolt weapon system. Big old chonky thing. Like you saw earlier, unscrew, we have our barrel shroud for grating cheese, which is important in case you get hungry, you can always grate some cheese. We got our barrel, and then we have just an empty tube. Now, if you will look inside of the tube, Colton, you'll see some cuts. Now, this isn't just a normal tube, but we have some, what we would call, I guess, lightning cuts. You can kind of think of certain guns having these, like uh, I believe Israeli FALs would have these. It's to help give like uh, dust, debris, and dirt somewhere to go when you're shooting until you have time to clean it later. And then if you can see inside the gun, pretty simple. We have a welded ejector on the side over here. And then we have, you can see the sear in there or the trigger and the sear, which would then of course drop your bolt. So overall, very simple gun. Now the question is, and I feel bad that I didn't bring it, so maybe I have to revisit this topic is, could a D-cell battery like the Swedish K make this one shoot faster? All right, so real quick, I wanna do a standing group on a silhouette. Got about a semi-loaded mag, we'll see what we can get. We're gonna be at 30 yards for this. Let's check out those results, the administrative results. All right, now we for sure peppered our bad guy. Taklovic Bakrava, the Taklovic Baklava Nova does not stand a chance. Now you're probably wondering, hey, Admin, how do you know so much about this obscure little firearm? I barely just heard about it today. Well, that's because, and a big thank you to Frank Inamico. Now, this is gonna be his book on Model 76, which I read for this video, and it was a gift from my dear friend, Nick. So I wanna give a big thank you to both parties involved. It really does help out, and I think it's a good book if you wanna check out, if you maybe want to, are interested in this topic at all. Nick got me this book because, well, it's my submachine gun, and I needed to know more about it. Now, how did I acquire this firearm? Well, essentially, a local store said, hey, we have this in stock. I know it's a big price, but if you're looking to get into the fully transferable market, then this could be a really good start. You see, these float around pretty cheap as far as the entry level goes. They're still very expensive, but I essentially told my wife, sweetheart, sweetheart, it's an investment. I must acquire fully transferable because these do appreciate with time. Now, all this to say that I would happily lose that monetary investment if these were made legal and the NFA abolished and the ATF abolished overnight. I would happily do that. And of course, you know, it would be kind of a kick to the nuts, but I'd be okay with that. I'd happily take that because that means a whole other bunch of cool machine guns and silencers are open for business. And that's exactly what I stand for as an American. Vote for me.